Hi, and welcome to this video. I've had a couple of questions from people asking what backup software I use and what do they recommend. Well, it's very difficult. I like to use Acronis True Image. Uh, I used to use Semantic Ghost years ago or many moons ago, but now I use Acronis True Image. I've always used it, I think it's fantastic. And uh, th the only thing I would say is if you want to pay, definitely get a paid version of Acronis. But if you don't um, and you want a freeware version, I'm going to give you a couple of options for you. So the couple of options, I've used this before um, and it's pretty decent. It's a, a nice uh, piece of software. You've got a 15 day uh, trial there as you can see, but it is freeware. So if you get your free registration key, you can actually use it forever. So you don't have to worry about the 15 days and it's free to obtain that key. So we're going to continue on this trial, have a little look, um, back up and restore my task and sync as you can see backup is pretty easy it's a real easy user interface to get used to you just need to put your name of the backup in there and the folder you want to call it and also the source you can actually fill this in the task you can call it my system backup blah 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 in there the notification email and also task but I wouldn't really worry about this so much go source files and folders I'm going to be doing the C drive click OK it's actually counting how many files that need to be backed up on that C drive. You can back up the registry, as you can see there. Emails, if you've got email accounts that you want to back up, um, Windows Mail, these will light up if you've got them on your system. Okay, um, we don't want to do any emails for this video, but you can actually do the user interface, uh, user settings, I should say, sorry, uh, that you want to back up, MSN, and so on. But remember, we are doing the C drive. So that's not going to really matter so much. You go next, and uh, this is the location where you can actually um, back up to the destination. So you've got your external hard drive, your local area network, sort of a LAN, sort of mapped network drive, or on a network there. Or you've got the removable uh, disk drive, floppy USB memory card, so on, CD drive, and also remote location using. Um, FTP so if you've got a web space you can whack it up there if you wanted to so you can access it all over the place so as I said always try to get it off the same drive so you don't want to go on the C drive this is the location place where we're backing up we don't want to go on that C drive because if that goes tits up our image is on there and it's going to be no good to us so we need to pick a location which is not on the C drive in this case I'm using the external drive my backup folder called and click OK and that's where it's going to go as simple as that and I'd also, you know, you could also keep a removable uh, on a USB stick, I would say. You know, you can have it in two places or three places. You can never have enough places for your image files. So next, no compression for me, no encryption. I don't need to do all that sort of stuff, really. I'm not secret service. I don't have to worry about that. And uh, obviously, it makes it more harder to get into if it goes wrong and you haven't got the encryptions and all this sort of stuff. Encrypting files and compression is not a good way to go okay for me that's my opinion anyway you've got the backup type okay incremental differential this is the same on all backup software really incremental you can read up on it it's I, I mean I'm not gonna go for it because I want to show you the other piece of software as well I'm just gonna take that out and um, do, a, do a backup there okay go next this is where you set your schedule okay and also as you can see I'm just going to do run manually but you can actually set it to a time date month whatever you know you set it up here and it will do it religiously okay so go next and this is where you can actually send play sounds notification all that sort of stuff to tell you when it's done the most important thing always verify your backup don't go without doing that because obviously if you get a corrupt image if it gets corrupted on backup it may look alright and you'll have a crash on your system go to go to that image that you've backed up and it may be corrupted and it will be no good to you so to be honest always verify it's worth verifying to say it's good it's a good clean image it's working okay that's what I would advise you to do it takes a bit of time but it's well worth doing as I said the three most important words in, com in computers is backup 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 remember that okay a lot of people don't and that's why they have problems click finished and you're good to go okay going to exit that that's the Titan backup software it's really easy and restore is really pretty much the same thing okay just go through the motions with that it's pretty much pointing towards where you back that file up 
OK, and that's good to go then. So let's have a little look at the uh, Cobain uh, program. Let's have a look here. I'm not going to really go through it, but this is basically what it is. It's another good program. I've not used it, to be honest with you, so I'm not going to go through it. Um, I know people have used it, and they've said it's pretty good. I don't think it's as good as Titan, but then I don't want to be biased. I think it's a good free bit of software. Okay, can't knock free software, so it is really good. But I've never used it, so I'm just going on the reviews that I've read over the over the years, and it's been around a long time. Now back to the one I use, Acronis software. Okay, I do use this. I've got a few copies of this, all different types, and this is the home version. Okay, and this is pretty much for me the best on the market. Back up and restore. Back up. Go next. Pick what one you want. My emails, my computer. I'm going to be doing. So go next. Discs and partitions or solid state. Um, they're both good. This is, um, you know, th we're going to be doing this uh, discs and partitions in this uh, tutorial. I'm going to be just doing the C drive, as you can see. It's C D H uh, C D F. Oh, not D. Where my eyesight's going. F G and H. I've got there, but I'm going to be doing the uh, C drive. Go next. Don't worry about these. Go next. Okay. This is. I'm not worrying about this at the moment. I'm just going to do a full backup of the drive, so I don't have to worry too much. Now, this is what it's going to be called. My backup. Tip. Now, what I'd advise you to do is always put a date in or something of that nature, so you know when you've made the backup. Because when you start having loads of backups, you're going to end up seeing, no, not knowing what one's what. Okay. So if you're doing backups for people. Put a date and their name if you want to. Okay, this if it's for a customer, at least you know what you're doing. We're going to go to our um, C E drive there. Sorry, this is where the location is. By the way, this is where it's going to be taking my backup to. And uh, let's go back. What's happening there? Something's gone wrong there. Okay, so let's call it. We're going to be calling this. Um, we're going to call this uh, Brightech 25.10.09, like so. And we'll go next. And it's now wants to create a full uh, backup archive or incremental and differential. That them two words again, as you can see now on here, it tells you exactly what that is. Um, it's pretty much self explanatory. You can read about it. Okay, I'm not going to read all the way through because I ain't got time. So I'm going to do a full backup anyway. Okay, use the default options or set up a man, uh, options manually. I'm going to use the defaults for this stage. This is where you actually type in your little description. You know, a backup of a Brightech computer on the data, blah, 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 blah. You know, I mean, whatever. Just stick it in there so it gives you a bit of a readme file so it just reminds you because you'll forget about it. Okay, next. And then you just proceed at this stage. And once you proceed, it will actually back up, as you can see to the E drive, my backup, and also hard disk one, C drive, NTFS state, um, and 156.2 gigabytes. Okay, I'm not going to proceed because I've already done it. And that's as simple as that, really. Now, what I'd suggest you do once you've made a backup is create uh, create an actual um, CD, a bootable, rescue boot, a bootable rescue CD. Okay, so disk utilities and then create a bootable rescue media okay that's what you want to do and this is going to help you so if your system crashes or you've got a virus you boot to the CD and it will then you point to your location of that thing so all you need to do is go next next and it will be a program on a recovery CD okay and it's as easy as that so once you've done that you just obviously as I said because if you try to restore from the desktop you can do that while the system's working, but if the system's not working or it's corrupted or it's full of viruses, you need to do it from a bootable media. Okay? Anyway, I hope this has been some use to you. My name is Brian from brightech.co.uk. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks for everyone who has subscribed. Over 600 members now. Thanks very much for your support and your kind words. And uh, I'll be making some more tutorials in the future. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.